Over 70% of viewers are unsubscribed. Be sure to hit that button as I push for 50,000 this year on Globetrotting. Looking into any airline's future can present many opportunities, possible concerns, and much more on top of that. However, for a company like Emirates, a global superpower, their progress across the last few decades has been a sight to behold. And as they chart a course of continued success, there are several key elements that need to be focused in on, from the fleet to the interior relationships with airlines, and so much more. Equally, there will also be frustration, so let me take a moment to examine the major company. Firstly, the Boeing 777X and Emirates are a bit of an odd duo. The Dubai-based airline remains the largest customer for this wide body. However, it is also equally one of the more critical companies part of the program. This aircraft was meant to be cleared to fly with passengers aboard at some time in 2020, and now, in the midway point of 2024, forecasts suggest that a 2025 certification will take place, therefore you can probably understand where their frustrations come from. Equally though, there are many customers that would come back to you and disagree with Boeing's forecasts, believing maybe a 2026 six entry into service is more attainable. Emirates has been vocal for many years about the negative implications felt on its business because of Boeing's inability to certify this long-haul aircraft. This was, however, perceived in the years gone by as potentially a way to leverage a discount on a new purchase, and ultimately, this would be highlighted through the Dubai Air Show's 2023 edition top-up order for the 777X to extend their lead as the largest customer. Either way, Emirates knows the 777 is the aircraft for them, and when having the opportunity to speak with some analysts on the topic who shared their view, a common theme emerged. The 777X is fit for Emirates. It works, so the carrier must remain with it despite frustrations, essentially exercising a degree of patience, which can be hard for some companies when they're seeing the considerable impact. Now, their commitment exceeds 100 units, and once airborne, you know the aircraft will be hugely important in aiding the transition towards next-gen planes. In the meantime, the airline is responding to these delays through several ways, including the upkeeping of its fleet. The retrofit program is where I want to head to next, which is valued in the billions. This is not just an ongoing process, but will continue well into the future and have repercussions for decades to come. It is aided by a recent announcement involving a further 71 aircraft added to the program. This strategic planning of the retrofit program can be described by many as a testament to their commitment of maintaining a high fleet standard. And if you're after what the goal is of this retrofit program, well, it's to give the aircraft that are already flying in the fleet a bit of a facelift. The ambition would be thanks to these facelifts to allow the jets to better align with incoming aircraft types, while ultimately keeping planes that are beginning to age still having a high standard inside the cabin so customers can't necessarily tell the difference. Emirates likes to keep its fleet young, and while it'll do this with the inbound aircraft from Airbus and Boeing, there are still some existing planes, such as the A380 and 777, that are expected to stick around a little longer, maybe even potentially longer than what would have initially been imagined because of all these supply chain issues that I speak of. Therefore, with these planes staying on longer, not only will there be a larger focus on maintaining them from a maintenance standpoint, but also you've got to take a look at the perspective of ensuring that they're of the highest quality for customers that choose to step aboard. That includes having all the up-to-date seating and amenities. In the more short term, we are going to see Emirates finally enter a new era with the arrival of the Airbus A350-900, the first of really a significant overhaul that we're expecting to see unfold at the company. The strategic vision that is being implemented at the carrier is to really fuel stakeholders' view of becoming more efficient and economically friendly. Emirates has already announced the first nine destinations that'll see the A350 with more expected to follow, and really one of the main takeaways from from this is the range in their geographical positioning. On top of that, the company says that the first 10 units now scheduled to arrive until March 31, 2025, will have three classes. However, the remaining jets that are part of a broader order for the aircraft have not had their configuration decided on, which means there is room for adjustments should Emirates see fit. 
they do go on to say that the A350 is going to be a big part of their long-term future. Is the aircraft going to be considered an ideal replacement for, say, the A380 or 777? No, but what it will do is ease pressure on these aircraft type and inbound ones while offering greater levels of flexibility across the network, really allowing the airline, as they describe at least, to focus on more regional or smaller markets over just, say, your Manchester and or London Heathrow that require an A380, but these smaller airports simply don't. And for the longest period, ignoring the 777X, there wasn't really a modest alternative in the Emirates fleet. In the case of the 350, the perfect example is its allowance for recommencement to Edinburgh later this year. With one aircraft arriving, obviously questions will now arise over the future of others, and that would be the Airbus A380. Emirates is the largest customer, so without a question, its commitment to the world's largest passenger plane is certainly present. But with Airbus and Boeing being pretty open and saying that they have no desire to build a dedicated replacement, Emirates will be forced to think outside the box when looking to replace the aircraft type. The airline is extending the life of existing planes considerably. That means the A380 included. And to extent, it goes a little bit against one of its critical models of maintaining a young fleet. But they love the A380 so much, and it works so fantastically, that there's no reason to get rid of it. In fact, Emirates wants to still fly the A380 into the early 2040s, which, permitting some absolute miracle or something rapidly changing means they will be the last operator of the aircraft. They've been truly one of the few airlines to master the plane and truly have it work on their network, and this is a feat not achievable in many other markets. So, therefore, replacing it is not only going to be difficult, but it's a conversation that has to be had, especially considering their strong reliance. Emirates has many aircraft on order, like I've touched on, and while these will go on to help replace the A380, none of them can really carry the same amount of passengers. By 2040, though, the prospect of new technology, new aircraft, and so much more will all be present. It is a scary thought to think what the world will be like by then, but as a result, there may just be something at the end of the tunnel that would reward Emirates for their loyalty to the program, in sense of looking at a high-capacity alternative. That's something we'll have to wait and see. And even still, by the 2040s, there'll only be a few units remaining. They certainly won't be flying still close to 100. Emirates' most recent recent financial performance also highlighted the importance of maintaining and growing the list of airline partners. This is part of a business endeavor that also includes elements such as committing to sustainable fuel initiatives. All this is going to be really important in allowing the airline to be successful for the long term. As competition continues to heat up in the Middle East, Emirates really needs to leverage the platform it already has to improve its service wherever possible. The upcoming permanent move to Dubai World Central in the 2030s will be another focal point of the business. This project, which is a mega one, is going to take shape over the next decade and really showcase the direction that Emirates wants to head into the future. That'll conclude today's aviation analysis. If you have any thoughts on it, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. Do be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest aviation analysis. And we'll fly.